from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The 1995 Holiday Lectures on Science. This year's lectures on the double life of RNA will be presented by Dr. Thomas R. Check, Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator, distinguished professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, and 1989 Nobel laureate in chemistry. The third lecture will discuss how to accelerate a reaction 100 billion times using only RNA. And now, to introduce our program, the Vice President for Grants and Special Programs of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Dr. Joseph Perpich. Good morning. It's a pleasure to welcome all of you again, the students here in the auditorium and the teachers and students in schools across the country to the second day of the 1995 Holiday Lectures on Science. We're delighted that you've joined us again to hear Dr. Thomas Check continue his lectures on the double life of RNA. Dr. Check is a distinguished professor at the University of Colorado in Boulder and an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. In his lecture, lectures yesterday, Dr. Check took us on an exploration of the world of RNA. With him, we were molecular voyagers on a journey to see how he and his scientific colleagues found that RNA does more than carry information. It can, without the help of any other enzymes, splice itself into different molecular arrangements. With that discovery, the world of biology as we knew it changed. Before then, it was considered likely that DNA or proteins were the original molecules that gave rise to life forms on Earth. Now we know it is more likely that RNA is the key molecule in the evolution of life forms. We have yet to crack the cosmic code to explain the origins of the universe, but Dr. Check and his colleagues have helped unravel another thread in the mystery of the origins of life on Earth. As Dr. Chopin, the Institute's president, noted yesterday, the promise has never been greater for science to improve the health and welfare of people around the world in the 21st century. Through this nation's schools, colleges, and universities, the doors to the world of science were opened to Tom Check. Here at the Institute, we want that world opened not only to the 1% of young people who will pursue research and teaching careers, but also the 99% who will not. We want each generation of new students, like you here in this audience and in the audience, our television audience, to have an open door to a lifetime of science learning. Tom Check has a commitment, a commitment to kindle and rekindle the interests of students in science. This morning we have a brief video in which Dr. Check talks of his commitment to reaching to teaching and to reaching out to students, as his teachers and mentors did to him when he was a student. Following the video, he will give, a brief, he will give his third lecture in this series and explain how, using only RNA, a reaction can be accelerated a hundred billion times. Following his lecture, there will be an opportunity once again for questions and answers for the students in the auditorium. Then we will take a break and return promptly at 11.30 for the fourth lecture. Once again, on behalf of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, let me extend a warm welcome to everyone here and to all of our television viewers as we begin the second day of the 1995 Holiday Lectures on Science. My whole goal as an educator is to present material to people so that no matter what level they're at, they can feel good about getting to the next level. I think that science can be captivating for average students as it is for, high, for the high achievers because there are so many things in our everyday lives and in the everyday newspaper that we, that we read that, that can be related to the material in science courses. I think the general public perceives that there's a lot of homogeneity in the type of people who are good scientists. And it would be a pretty dull job if that were the case. The truth is that people with an incredible wide range of personalities, from people who are very patient data collectors to wild men and wild women, people with a wide variety of training, um, personality traits, skills in very different areas can contribute 
a lot to scientific discoveries. But it isn't always true that the people who are the brilliant uh, high school students who get the highest grades on the exam are the ones who do well as practicing experimental scientists because there are a lot of skills that uh, in doing experimental science that can't be tested on standardized exams. So although uh, good mathematical ability, good quantitative ability, uh, good analytical thinking ability are part of being a good scientist, there's a very hard to quantitate element of maybe it's sort of like being a good cook, you know, sort of knowing when to put a dash of this and a dash of that and then taste it and decide how to adjust it that can make for a very good scientist and uh, it should be encouraging to those students who are the B students in high school and the B students in college that very often they are the ones who end up doing the um, really great work in, in research. If you love science in high school and now you go to the university and you become discouraged by it, uh, and decide that um, maybe you don't, you know, chemistry sounded fun or physics sounded fun in high school, but now as the material changes, you don't like it as much, don't necessarily give up your interest in science. Instead, you can move over to a different area, explore a different area of science, and often you'll find something that really suits your, your character. So be persistent in your interest in science and don't let one discouraging experience talk you into being a business major. Good morning and welcome to the third lecture on the double life of RNA. Uh, today I'm talking as a biochemist. You can see that biochemist isn't too much different from a molecular biologist. I'm the same person. I simply have a different sweater on. Uh, but I use the word biochemist to emphasize the fact that we're going to spend some time exploring the question of reaction mechanism, the question of how does a folded RNA molecule provide both the high specificity and the tremendous rate acceleration uh, that is characteristic of catalysis. And then uh, in the second part of the lecture, I'll talk a bit about what that structure of the RNA is that uh, promotes these reactions. So let's begin by uh, looking where we were yesterday at the uh, process of, first of all, copying of the RNA from uh, a DNA molecule, the process of transcription. And then once we have this precursor RNA, it needs to be cut at points X and Y and uh, rejoined to give uh, a functional RNA molecule. So the question is, uh, how is this RNA splicing achieved? How are points X and Y chosen? And uh, what is the exact mechanism by which this rearrangement is facilitated? And you'll see that it is not done by cutting at points X and Y and rearranging, but by a slightly different pathway, which is shown here. So the uh, RNA, first of all, folds up and uh, this green line is meant to represent the intron portion, and I, I draw it as a, as a uh, so, uh, sort of a strange-shaped molecule just to emphasize the fact that it has a, a particular structure. Then the left-hand site, the X site from the previous slide that needs to be cut, is designated by a base pairing interaction between a portion of the intron which is called the internal guide sequence, first named by Wayne Davies, a, a worker from England. And this internal stretch of nucleotides within the uh, intron pairs with a series of nucleotides